Welcome to the Best Kept Secrets podcast where we share our best kept secrets about life, love, God and everything in between. Hi guys, welcome back to the Best Kept Secrets podcast episode 7. So we're only one episode away from the season finale. I can't believe we've already finished an entire season. I am so excited to be sharing on this conversation today. And it is about, it's deep this one, it's about reinventing yourself and breaking cycles. This is a very deep conversation and I want to take it with as much the, the depth it deserves. And when I was thinking about who to do, to do this with, I thought of none other than Stephanie Cherono, <laughs> who has inspired me. Like when I watch you mm. and how I've been watching you just go through this journey that you have been on that you'll share with us, yeah. I have felt inspired to do more and do better with myself yeah. and just like do some internal self-work mm. and you'll share it with us. But you can start off by introducing yourself for those who don't know you. Hi. So nice to be here. Hey, sorry. So nice to be here. My name is Stephanie Cherono. I am, uh, first off, I'm a believer. Second, I'm a professional makeup artist and a digital content creator. And I'm my mother's last born, proudly, to this day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to be here so much, yeah. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you can start us off. So basically on this um, on this podcast, what we do is that we share our best kept secrets about the topic that we're speaking about. Okay. Um, so we'll go each sharing a topic. Uh, but before we even get there, maybe you can share with us whatever you're comfortable with. Um, share with us what your journey has been like in terms of re reinvention and breaking cycles and what that yeah. has looked like for you. I feel like I've been on this journey since, uh, for like consistently two years now. Mm -hmm. And... Most times when you try when you're starting off this journey, it, it tends to come from a lot of pain mm -hmm. or maybe a version of you that you're not entirely happy with. Mm -hmm. And I think I was in a cycle of behaviors, a cycle of friendships, a cycle of a, a lifestyle that I was not entirely happy with. I didn't even like how I looked to begin with. Mm -hmm. And um, through that process, I think I've I've acquired so much discipline and respect even for myself, mm -hmm. regardless of how long it has been. And I'm still at it because literally at a jana, I was discovering something that I need to let go of. And it's just taking it stride day a day, day at a day after a day, and being very, very, very kind to myself as I do it. So I think the epitome of that is just that I think I've loved myself more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think people can see it as well, which is which is yeah. very gratifying because I'm yeah. just like, wow. And mm. it's not easy because <laughs> yeah. the intricacies and the details of it is that mm -hmm. you have to quite literally sit in a room by yourself and call yourself out mm -hmm. every single day. Yeah. And that in itself can be quite dark. It can be mm. quite demotivating to see the list of the negatives potentially being longer than the list of positives about you. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think... It's just a grace. Generally, yeah. I think just that. Because I'm mm. still going to learn more mm -hmm. things as I go. I'm not entirely where even I think I should yeah. be. But I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm happy with where I'm at now in comparison to where I was whilst I was starting. Mm. Yeah. I think it takes a lot of courage to even admit that you are not happy with the person that mm. you are. That you didn't even like yourself. Mm. You didn't like the way you looked. It, it takes a lot of courage for you to... Even say those words out, out loud, loud. Yeah. you know, because I feel like I was there a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, I was also in a very dark place and in, in a place where I had very self low self worth, where mm. I didn't regard myself highly. I didn't mm. love myself. Mm. Um, I didn't, you know, I I was just stuck in like negative toxic cycles mm. over and over and mm. over again it's taken me years um to break myself off of those things mm. but I, I guess i can start by sharing my first point sorry I was, guys i was told Everyone. i saw the episode and i was just like i love that because i write everything as well i have like so many notebooks yeah. if anything i appreciate notebooks and stationary gifts more than anything because me too it gives i me, love it i, I, I love write writing. everything i do mm. all my guests are usually so intimidated by it it's the no, same i love it i love it. I love it i love it um so my first point that i wrote is that who okay which mm. one do i start with 
start wherever. Mm, which is, I guess, in relation to what we've been talking about. I wrote that to identify the thing that's keeping you stuck in a cycle is to acknowledge the place where you're wounded. Um, <laughs> and there's always that ka one ka place where is the opening of your wound and that's the place that keeps you stuck in a lot of cycles. Mm. Um, and I guess for me, it was just how... I viewed myself and mm. how I did not love myself. Mm. And when I acknowledged that there was a wound there, I had to dig deep. To I was like, yeah, so was. why do I not love myself? Why mm. is this coming from? So, of course, I had to go back like childhood. deep into my childhood mm. and just realized mm. that, you know, a lot of the negative words that I was told growing up, mm. I internalized them mm. and I believed those things about myself. Mm. And then it was showing up in my relationships. Mm. So the men that I would choose to date mm. were also very self-loathing one. Mm. Either they loathed, loathed themselves or they treated me in ways where you I would eventually started losing, losing your, myself yes, as well, yeah. you know. Mm. So if I would ever get a healthy um, partner, I'd be like, like, hey, well, this is the one. I'd be like, Mm-mm, yeah, no, let's no, no, go. No, no, I'm going to head out. I'd be mm. like, no, you, first of all, you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, where's the drama? First of all, where's the, where the, where the, where the fight? Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I, had to, I had to look back mm. and one, first acknowledge that one, I am wounded. Two, where is this place of, of wounding? Mm. Where is the place that it's showing up the most prominent? Mm. And then three, because of those wounds, what cycles am I now stuck in mm. because of them? You know, And mm. it was also showing up even in my career mm. because I don't think, because I, I didn't regard myself highly, mm. I would not think that I was capable or worthy of doing certain things with my life. Yeah, You know what I mean? I was just complacent mm. generally. I was just yeah. like, Whatever. As long as I'm yeah. paying my bills. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. Too. Accepting them bare yeah. minimum. Exactly. Mm. I was because I didn't regard myself highly, highly yeah. in in any in any sort of way. Yeah. So um acknowledging the place where you are wounded will show you the cycles that you are stuck in. Yeah. I completely relate to everything that you're saying. Mm-hmm. I think for me it stemmed from and I've been public about this that I've been raised by a single mom. And in as much as she's done the best that she could, there's always that yearning for a male figure as women that we've not really been able to get as myself and probably my sister. But for me, it was a validation thing. Mm. I just wanted to be validated. Mm. Like, just tell me I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Um, Or even just acknowledging my presence. I think I I wanted to be complimented because I'm a words of affirmation, babe, which is why Mm. the things that even were said to me when I was younger, I'm still forgiving people to this day and i'm also not using i'm not using the things that they said then against them because i'm realizing that they have taken the time and the the opportunity to do better and be better people but i'm like still the 15 year old baby is still suffering to this day so i'm still Mm -hmm. not able to let go and i was also i had to get to a space where i had to generally forgive my father as well and what that entailed was me asking so how was his environment when Mm -hmm. he grew up what type of parent, parents did he have? What, how are they dealing with things in that side of town? So that I can see how he was able to get to where he was. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, he must have gone through something yeah. to be dealing with things the way he's dealing with them. Otherwise, where would you treat people that are that your kids like that? So mm. for me, that gave me so much peace to know that it's not a me thing. Unfortunately, he did go through it as a child. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I, the least I can do is let him go so mm-hmm. that he can be able to get, go through his like healing yeah. alone and freely mm-hmm. without grudges from his kids. Mm-hmm. So that was one. Number two, I think the the route that I took with my career, because I've, I've spoken about this a couple of times, that my siblings are in very serious fields. My brother is a pilot. My sister is an engineer. My mom is in uh, finance. So it's just like... Cherono here with the makeup artistry. Okay, tell us. <laughs> so I think that constant need for me to validate that this is a career that mm-hmm. can bring money, that is respected, that is valued, that it would actually probably even bring us like generational wealth, possibly. Mm. Mm. And just asking them to, you know, just can you just support, support. me on this one? Yeah. So I found myself now seeking support from everyone else who found my career or deemed my success at that point in time as worth it to be celebrated. Mm. So that maybe could be a potential friend who probably at that point in time could be a fan. Mm. Nasi Jui. Like any as long as you are telling me stuff, you're doing a good job. 
I'm like, right I up my alley. It. Yeah. And then the men. For me, I found myself being available. And my pastor asked me this last Sunday, um, what type of men do you attract? And I was like, and now who? Girl, what are you talking about? Like, what type of men do I attract? And I had to look at all the similarities of the people who maybe in the past year, because mm-hmm. I haven't been in a relationship for two years, who have impacted me and what type of men do I attract since then. It's very un- unavailable people. People who look at my body before they look at my heart. Mm-hmm. People who are you know, probably want to be associated with me because of who I am, not only mm-hmm. not finding out or trying to dig in yeah. deeper into the story. And people who are just for fun times, mm-hmm. you know, and... And just emotionally unavailable people. And I was Mm. like, what does that relate to my dad? Mm. So I had to, that is one thing that now, and just so I'm not dating, because I'm like, I cannot get into a relationship until I figure that out. Yeah. You know, but even my friendships, I've been able to, I've been able to balance it. But definitely Mm -hmm. it was like an identity and a validation thing initially. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That now, to be honest, I, I scream the affirmations to myself. So I think we're good. That's yeah. good. Validate yourself. <laughs> because Validate no, one, it. no one is going to do it yeah. for you. You know, yeah. it's so sounds like, yeah, it's nice. And also now I'm getting to a space where I can accept a compliment because I would mm. only accept compliments from people that I genuinely want, like the toxic ex. Like if mm. it's not from that nigger, Taki, y'all are not, I'm not pretty enough, basically. Yeah. But mm. then now I look at myself and I'm like, yeah, I am. And I'm mm. worthy. And it's mm. okay. And I'm being patient with that. And I think the one thing that has helped this entire journey is genuinely finding a relationship with God mm. Mm. that has given me peace that I genuinely cannot explain. So even right now, like I'm telling you, I'm going through something. <laughs> like I'm okay. Don't look like your problem. Please I am never gen- refuse yeah. to look like your problem. I'm genuinely okay. Yeah. Like I'm not dealing with things the same way because there's just mm-hmm. someone else dealing yeah. with them for me as well. Mm. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> okay. Your point, Amma, you've said so that was that was oh. it. <laughs> you were getting lost in it. That I was, was it. Just like I, I was so lost in it. Mm, I don't know if there's anything I would add to it, but mm-hmm. I think the whole messaging around therapy, I think for me, is for me to find out the why. Like, mm-hmm. why do I behave the way I do? Why do I talk the way I do? Why do I react the way I do? Mm-hmm. Why do I love the way I do? Mm-hmm. You know, like it's ob- over obsessive. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm not seeing you, if I don't know where you are, why is it that? Mm-hmm. Why is it that? Um, my attachment style is very anxious. Like I needed to figure Same. that out, and mm. I and that I could only find out in therapy. And even some of the things that I'm finding out in therapy, I'm not happy with. Mm. But I think it's an applaud to myself because I'm finding out. Facing yourself is scary, <sighs> bro. It's bro. so scary. And I have therapy tomorrow, so there are things we need to <laughs> discuss. <laughs> um, yeah. So my second point, I wrote um how. Um, when I was learning about breaking cycles, cycles mm. I was learning this to get out of a situation, relationship that I had been in for five years. Mm. And it was very unhealthy. Mm. And I felt like I was stuck in a loop. Like, mm. I'd break up with him, then I'm back, then mm. we're, we're broken up, then I'm back. Mm. And I knew it was bad for me. Everyone knew it was bad for me. Mm. My friends, my family, no mm. one... Like it one approved of mm. it, even deep within myself. You knew. I knew. You knew. I knew. Girl, I, <laughs> and we've been knewing. I've been knewing. <laughs> knewing. Like you always know. You always deep down. know. But you, you always, just like you benefit of yeah. that. You just want to like, You're just like hopefully. Yeah, I would rather mm. not be alone. Yeah. I would rather be in this horrible situation mm. than be alone. Mm. Right. So I was stuck in a very in a loop, in a mm. cycle that I needed to break out Those of. Those ones for the man was saying, we are Taruti too. Yeah. Mm. And you know, the crazy thing is, he you used to tell to me, face. he used to tell me, you know, mm. the problem with you women is that we'll cheat, we'll disrespect you, whatever, Utarudi but too. you Utarudi too. You'll be upset for a little men. while, you'll throw a fit, you'll throw a tantrum, but, but you'll, you'll be back. come back. So this man is outwardly is telling me, telling it to me that Utarudi too, and truth, truth, is that I would always go back. back. I would yeah. always, yeah. And I got to a point where I was just like, I really don't love myself enough if I continue to let Do myself this. be mm. stuck in this mm. cycle. So mm. anyway, so I started just like researching about like breaking cycles and soul mm. ties and all of that. And how does that look like? Mm. Um, so I came across a someone that was talking about the concept of trees and seeds. Mm. And let me try to, I hope I, I'm, I'm going to do it justice. But basically, um, we're going to become farmers. 
for like a little while. For like two seconds. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> so, um, the seeds, seeds produce the kinds of plant or trees from which they came. Mm. So basically, um, mm. when you plant a plant or a tree, it produces seeds, mm. right? But then that seed is what is produced is from the kind which it came. Which was planted. Which it was mm. planted, right? So, I was just like, this cycle that I am stuck in, it's a constant cycle because in every season, season in, season out, I am producing the same kind kind of seed, mm. right? Which is a bad seed. Mm. And it's a bad seed because I am a bad plant. Mm. I am the drama. You are the problem. I am the problem. <laughs> yeah. I am the bad tree, right? Mm. So if I'm if I was producing healthy seeds, healthy plant, the healthy, outcome would have been different. Yeah, the outcome would have been different, Absolutely. literally. Yeah. So as in, I feel like God is so funny in the way that He teaches us because I have no interest in like agriculture or whatever. But here but you here are. But here I was researching trying. about plants and trees and <laughs> and how does that work? I hear literally, you. and I I learned that for you to start a new season. You have to be good enough of a mm. of a plant or of a tree so that you produce a good seed mm. that will now in turn produce more and more and more and it's more. It's a ripple effect. Yeah, it's like a mm. ripple effect. Literally, that's a cycle's a ripple effect, mm. right? So that's when I was just like, you know what? Over the years, I have seen how every decision that I have made in regards to this relationship and going back mm. or just accepting this mm. disrespect and cheating mm. and all of this mm. has been a ripple effect not only to my um, how I view relationships, but also to my work. Mm. My work was suffering. My friendships were suffering. My mental health was suffering. I had lost a ton of weight. Mm. I was, in fact, like border weight, underweight. Like it was just you know after that we were maybe suddenly game. <laughs> May said the KFC you got no man name. That was a time for like the yeah. KFC endorsements and the brand partnerships. To be honest, yeah. Um, and I, and I believe what you've said. I think my mom was telling me you cannot be doing the exact same thing expecting a different mm-hmm. result. You cannot be telling me that this is what you're doing. You cannot be hanging out on this and hanging out to the same type of people expecting them to change. I'm like, just, and she told me just because you're the one who wants is yearning. For this change is yearning for this next step doesn't mean you have to carry everyone mm-hmm. with you because I also had that notion that savior complex of yes I'm I'm probably going through it but these friends that we're also dealing with this situation with you you're also going through it as well mm-hmm. see we just go together mm-hmm. but it, you realize that's a journey that you have to face by yourself um and I think just to add on to that I think for me hey therapy therapy has shown me dust you know and even just writing letters to my younger self, the things that I would possibly have done. And that's why I've made peace with all the mistakes that I've made because I generally had to look back at all of them. And when I came to the realization that the people that I have around me are a reflection of who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm. See, I lost everyone because I'm like, <laughs> I don't like that reflection. It's not yeah, looking good. It's yeah, not, mm, I'm really yeah. not liking it. And I went through a, process, a, a season of isolation and I was alone for such a long time and people didn't really know that I was going through it until I publicly made a post about my mental health when I was just about to embark on this journey. And that for me was also because I I didn't want to have a mediocre like attachment to my career. Mm. I, you know, sounds like you just create content, you're just taking pictures, you move on yeah. ah, for the bank, for yeah. vibes. Yeah. I'm like, we, we need to be making impact in one way or another, making mm. people happy, inspiring. Like it needs to be for something. I'm like, I would not, I don't follow people who I don't feel inspired by. So I'm like, why am I making these people follow me if I'm not doing any, I'm doing the bare minimum. Mm. And for me also making that step publicly to also realize that the other people who are going through the same thing and choosing to also share my journey to losing the weight because I'd gotten to a place where I had cholesterol issues. Really? I had cholesterol issues the end of 2021. Mm. Mm-hmm. I went for a full body checkup and they were like, your veins are literally squeezed in fat. So that's why it, two stairs, unahema. Mm. like you could possibly have heart issues at this point mm-hmm. and your and with your age Stephanie like it doesn't make any sense and because me I'm, I think for me how I chose to deal with it was just overindulging I was mm. just indulging if it I was if I wasn't drunk I was overeating if I wasn't overeating I was dead asleep like mm. it that was just the cycle that yeah. I was going through and being in circles of friends who then I go to mm. the work of shame and the circles just con- and I was mm. like who is this woman? Like, I cannot recognize yeah. her at mm. all. And I remember days when I was 
creating and I was happy with myself and I was also happy in my singlehood. Mm. I was not opposed to that. And also just to give retrospect, because I don't think I've ever talked about this, best mm. kept secret. <laughs> um, the, the thing that prompted my, my uh, journey mm. of like reinventing and changing how things are was physical abuse actually. Really? When I was in a physical abuse, it wasn't physical abusive, physically abusive for a while. It happened okay. once. Okay. And I was mm-hmm. just like, Brother Bernard, mm. I'm out. I'm mm. out. And for me, the reason why that was a touchy topic for mm-hmm. me is because it had happened prior in my family. Mm. So now I started recognizing patterns and I was mm. like, so now it has become my generation. Oh mm. my God, we have to stop it. Now mm. I cannot afford mm-hmm. to have my kids thinking that it's okay mm. for anyone to lay a finger on a woman. So that for me was shocking. At the same time, it was very insightful. And I think it was honestly the best things that could have ever happened to me. Because from that, mm-hmm. I realized that there are other things that are still cycles that I need to break. In as much as they're not in my family, they're in me that I've taken up maybe from like yeah. around surroundings, friends, family, the so- social media, society. You just never know what you pick up in the name of pleasing other people other than yourself. Mm. Because I think that's where it all comes from. Mm-hmm. The minute you step out of your identity and you're not being true to who you are, then you'll find yourself licking so many asses along the way and then you lose yourself in the process. And if at all you cannot recognize yourself and you're not happy with who you mm-hmm. are and you don't like yourself, how do you expect everyone else to like you? Yeah. Like you're also not asking for a bit too much mm-hmm. if you're asking other people to mm-hmm. like some, something that you yourself yeah. don't like. Mm-hmm. Like it's a disservice to yourself. So I think, yeah. I was just like, I don't like who I, I, who I look like. I don't like how I feel. I'm like my mm-hmm. routines. My room was always 100%, always a representation mm-hmm. of my mental health, which was dark. Mm. It was it was it was a tough yeah. one, yeah. Mm. So for me, therapy. Mm. <laughs> if if it, if if you're really looking for places yeah. to start, start with therapy yeah. because it's also it's also uh, information that is coming from a non-judgmental point of view. Because mm. if you ask this to your mother, she'll probably be leaning towards mm-hmm. a favorite sibling, or she would make comparisons between you and someone else. Mm-hmm. They will they, they will not say things. And they're not meaning them in a bad way, to be honest. I think parents always just make a comparison to someone else who's doing better in the same age group as you. Yeah, and they it's can't not, help it. Yeah, they can't yeah. help it. It's equal buyer, but yeah. you'd rather hear it from someone who does not know you and they're hearing this information and getting to see you for who you are. Mm-hmm. And they've also been in this field for a long time. So, of yeah. course, they'll give you the tools to deal with yeah. it. But from there, you'll be able to identify, okay, so in my friendships, I'm attracting people who are maybe over-dependent on me because mm-hmm. I have a need to feel needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, if you don't need anything from me, then you cannot be my friend. Mm-hmm. And then you find fully secure people who don't need anything other than just your presence. Mm-hmm. And that shocks you because mm-hmm. you're not used to the concept. But those are things you can only just learn about in therapy. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to applaud you, especially with the gym. Oh. The weight loss. Hey, yeah. I went from 88 to now I'm 65. So you've lost I'm 20. Yeah, I'm dangling between 64 and 65 now. 20 something yeah. kgs. Mm. Yeah, that's not easy to do. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And the conversations that you have with yourself in the gym. Mm. Because, yes, there's a trainer. Yes, there's someone who's pushing you. But for you to do that last step, because there are many times mm-hmm. in the beginning, in 2022, that I walked out mm-hmm. from the gym. I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> like are we negotiating I'm the one who's paying you I'm out and I left there's so many times I did that until I realized that they're not even doing it for me that I'm supposed to be doing it for myself mm. and the discipline the discipline that you acquire from the mm. gym the level of like aff- affirming yourself because yeah. to do that next rep to do the third one and even to prompt the trainer to add weight mm. now that you feel like you've got into a space where you're confident enough because you will gain confidence yeah. from the gym the more <sighs> I'm telling you, the gym has just done something to me. And I'm and to the point where right now, whenever I'm going through it, that's the first place I go to. Mm. I'm like, there's no way I cannot yeah. go to the gym. I actually t- talked about this in episode one with Zia. And we were saying how um, the gym is an amazing place to build discipline. Mm. And for me, discipline and showing up for myself shows myself that I love myself so enough. It's a form of self-love. Yeah, it's a form of self-love mm. enough to honor the promises that I made to myself that tomorrow mm. I'm showing up to the gym, it sucks and I hate it here. In fact, half of the time I'm in the gym, I'm just like, oh, I Not hate it again. here. It's Not painful. Mm, it's sorry. like, it's just a lot, you know? So 
for you to have done it for however long that you've done it and mm. to just go through that like transformation mm. that you have mm. you know it's just like a reflection of the love that you have for yourself now yeah. for sure for sure yeah. there's certain things that I don't play around and I think that's one of them and it's also because I've seen the growth that I've experienced in the gym. I went from not using any weights to now using weights, then to not using weights again, to now I'm back to heavy lifting. So I'm constantly pushing myself. So I think one thing that I ask myself, if I'm like, if you're constantly yearning for more with your fitness, why are you not yearning for more in your friendships? Why are you not yearning for more in your career? Why are you not shooting for the stars when it comes to other things? Why is that this particular thing is only... For, for the longest time, I, I was obsessive over the gym. Like even that days that go seven days last mm. year, and I'm just like, okay, let's stop pushing it. Like yeah. it's, it's now it's getting toxic. Much, yeah. yeah, and I was becoming over dependent on it because I was really not ready, ready to face the world, not ready to be open to like now finding a new circle of friends and like mm. finding my niche with content, mm. going on YouTube. You know, yeah. what do I like with my hair? Like, because mm. I'm starting like over that. again. Yeah, it has to. You have to draw. There's a thin line between obsession and yeah. I'm like yeah. now I need to this thing that I found great. It's a nice foundation. But now we need to find out how we can implement the lessons, the discipline, the confidence, mm. the resilience there in other things so that mm -hmm. we can just be fully a whole human yeah. being. Yeah. I like that. So like gym that. therapy, gym and therapy for sure. Mm. Um, I wrote, my next point I wrote is that... You know, um, I didn't know we were supposed to be like having points. Me, I just came. It's fine. Just vibes <laughs> and inshallah, babes. So, um, <laughs> hmm, I'm trying to see which one. I wrote that sometimes you miss your season because you're stuck in a cycle. And mm. so you have to go through the cycle again and break it so you get to your season. Mm. And <laughs> and um, years ago, I think in 2017, someone came to me and told me that God has told them that I'm in my season of marriage. That was in 2017. And I saw the video that you posted last week about you being obsessive over marriage yes. at some point. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One, it added to that, to my obsession <laughs> with the concept I'm of like, marriage. Because I'm like, I'm going to make it easier. Yeah. <laughs> but when I look back, mm. I'm just like, that was probably my season of marriage mm. and I probably missed, missed it, it because... I was stuck in a cycle mm. with unhealthy men. Mm. And there was no way that God was going to allow mm. me to end up in a marriage that he did not intend for mm. me, you know. And sometimes we can force and just go ahead and do our thing. Mm. But because me had already prayed and I told God, me, I only want a marriage that is from you. He wasn't mm. going to allow it. Mm. So he was going to make sure that I go through this thing until I learn the lesson that I need mm. to learn in order for, for him to now be like, okay, now you can walk into that season. And also to add on to that, I think one thing that, I, that was mentioned even on, Saturday, on Sunday in church, is that we anticipate when we pray to God about all these things and all these blessings, but he looks at us and, and, and he's like, I don't think you're ready to value this blessing mm -hmm. as much as I want you to search. So don't let go of it because it's yeah. a lifetime thing. Yeah. The blessings that he gives, not that just for now, it's mm -hmm. not seasonal. Like he'll give you something that will last you in generations. Yeah. So you're here, toxic, probably abusive, probably intoxicated or all these things and all these cycles and you're like, oh, I think I'm ready for marriage. He's like, bro. <laughs> like, no, come on. <laughs> Like, would you mind to marry yourself? Honestly, like, seriously. Yeah. yeah, so I hear you mm. completely. Yeah, because mm. even when I look back, the person that I was in 2017 mm. and the person that I am now, Oof. I'm just like, there's no way I would have been a good <laughs> wife. I would have been a horrible <laughs> wife. <laughs> Sorry to that For man. Real. Whoever it would yeah. have been, I would have been a horrible yeah. wife. And I get why I was stuck. I had to learn my mm. lesson for me to break mm. out of it so I can walk in whatever season mm. that now God intends for me. Mm. Today, actually, in the morning, when I was prepping for this episode, I remembered there's a song by Jonathan McReynolds. Mm. It's called Cycles. And he says that the devil, he knows, he, he mm. learns from your mistakes even if you don't. And that's why he'll keep you in cycles. Mm. So he sees it too. It's not like when we are going to the club, yeah. it's just God who's like, oh, yeah. look at my child again. Yeah. The devil is yeah. just like, oh, like, oh let's go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So basically, even if you don't learn from your mistake, mm. he learns from me. And he's taking and notes. And he knows the places to the, pick the to, most. To pick at you, the places mm. that will keep you mm. in, in those cycles. Because mm. basically, the enemy, what he doesn't want you to do, he doesn't want you to progress. He doesn't mm. want you to 
to grow deeper. He doesn't want you to move from one season to the other mm. to the other. He wants you to be stuck. Stay. Stay there. Yeah, he wants yeah. you to be stuck. So he, it's important for you to learn the lessons that you need to learn mm. in this season so that you're able to progress from to the, from this season to the next to one the to the next, next to one the next. because seasons don't last long yeah. but if you if you're not careful if you don't learn you'll be stuck in a cycle you'll be stuck in a loop mm. and you'll be missing out on so many things yes. that God already gave you but you can't access them Absolutely. because you're stuck so i was um trying to not overshare yeah but um i remember meeting you at an event and mm-hmm. now you know which event which event yes <laughs> that i met you at and i remember you were drunk and i could tell you were not present present mm. you know and just because i have shown up like that in many instances where on the outside i look like i'm fine in fact i look like i'm having a good time and i was time. overdoing it in yeah. that event but like yeah. on the inside i was yeah i was in the pits yeah you're in the pits and, and you're in, in the, the dark and yeah. you're all in all of that mm. and So I just like again like when I I've been like you know silently like watching you mm. and cheerleading you mm. going through this I just feel you know I want to give you your flowers for mm. that because I know how hard it is yeah. because I've been there. Thank you. Yeah. Um I think those and that's why I stopped going for events cuz I would overdo just to have a conversation with someone mm. to be able to have a conversation with someone cuz for a while When I was going through the breakup in 2021, I any chance I could get to talk about this situation, I take it. So I I'm drunk to drink CV and I start crying about this situation because I was I was in disbelief for such a long time. So now when that event happened, I had just gone through like to my first or second brother Bernard. <laughs> okay, when the event happened. When the event happened, I had just done like maybe two three sessions of therapy and and of course the first two were just me crying we didn't even talk <laughs> <laughs> because mm-hmm. it, for the first time i'm just like i'm letting you go and i thought i was fit to come for an event and even that event i was happy because i was in the presence of creatives and everything but i was overdoing it just to make other people happy again it just kept mm-hmm. on creeping up on me that you're not the priority they are so even though you are not in a happy place then you have to be the version of you that they expect which is happy go lucky jolly mm. so she can make them happy. Mm. Oh, you brought back you brought back memories. I'm just thinking I'm just like oh, hala. <laughs> no, but like it's good to look yeah. back at older versions of yourself mm. and if you don't recognize growth then it means you're stagnant. Absolutely. Yeah, so you need to always when you go back in hindsight mm. you need to be able to recognize that oh that I don't even relate with that version of who I yeah. was then because I've grown so much as And a it's so crazy because the other day we had a Shiva's party at Milan <laughs> and the last time I was there brother Bernard it was just like what who is this person and yeah. I remember I sat down because I was sitting with M- Midoni Drama Queen and that is also another thing imposter syndrome does that where you in the presence of people who you know for a fact who you you're validated and you're worthy of being in the in presence the same of same table as but me. you're just like what did i do to deserve this so in the mm. process of me now going through those spirals mozoni was with me and she was just like what's going through your head and i'm like i can't imagine that i'm here again and now i'm here with a brand that is representing me there's pictures of me on the wall like what is going on so i was almost closely to about to have a panic attack But Stephanie, that is for you to that wall up, that picture up there. It's for you to make the comparison of the person that was last here mm-hmm. and the person that is pre- mm-hmm. sitting here now. And she was like, even if there's someone who was there that particular night that you're talking about and is there now, they're just like, wow, look at yeah. her. Yeah. So I want you to look at it the same way. And I think instantly I was just in a better space yeah. mentally, even just to be accepting mm-hmm. the things. that are coming my way now and believing that I'm deserving of it is also mm. a cycle that I'm working on because I'm like every single time I'm just like oh it's my luck mm. just luck yeah mm. I'm not doing anything yeah. and then you realize that you're actually giving yeah. back and putting mm. in the work and yeah. you're deserving of everything so I'm going to take my flowers babe I agree especially on the when you go to places like old places you yeah. have gone or sometimes it's even a scent yeah yeah like that reminds you of something like yeah the perfume i was using like in 2019 mm. and it reminds me of who i was in yeah. 2019 or the things that i was going mm. through then 
and i'm just it's so good to be able to just relish in the growth that you have gone exactly. through as a person yeah. that's why i like keeping journals because mm. i like going back in, mm. like things i was writing in 2020 when i was in the, the, pits. the pits yeah and here i am now and i'm like oh that tiny thing is yeah. what was like breaking and we were able to get past wa- it and i was able to get past it so even the thing i'm going through now mm. i can get past it when he yeah. says this too shall pass he means it yeah yeah this too shall pass for real Period. Yeah. So, um I actually only have one point left. Mm. Um so my last best kept secret about reinventing yourself and breaking cycles is something that I actually was I watched a someone a f- few days ago. It dragged me. <laughs> It's you know, when this was, this was a, you know, like it's, it's right for you. <laughs> I was like, sister, there's been, been a lot of those lately. To be honest, there's been a lot of those. Have you been in my bed? <laughs> How do you know? Do you have cameras in my house? Who told you? Yeah. Right. So it's by Stephanie Ike, who I absolutely love. There we go. I love her. So <laughs> that girl much. shouts at me every day. She was shouting at me. <laughs> I was like, you have been sent. Yeah. You are truly the yeah. woman of God. Uh, but basically, she was talking about the story of the Israelites, and funny enough. In my Bible study, we are reading the book of Exodus, mm. and we're only just a couple of chapters in. But she was sharing how the Israelites, um, the going to Canaan, Canaan, however mm. you say it, mm. it was only a seven-day trip, mm. but it took forty years. Wow! And that was because of their mentality, because mm. they were so stuck in their slave mentality. The loop the loop they were mm. so stuck in their slave mentality in in the people that they were mm. that they were not prepared to be the people that were able to live in a promised mm. land so god was just like you guys the way you are set up right now there's no way i can allow you to enter my promised land when you mko mm. you know i have to develop your character mm. i have to break some things mm. i have to break this mentality mm. you're stuck in Preach. i have to break some Absolutely. cycles yeah. that is here because you can clearly see those like when you read the book i haven't finished reading mm. it but when you read the book you see them you know just going back to the to the idols to the gods to the whatever yeah, it's so funny you mentioned yeah when things yeah. are go- getting when things yeah, get hard thicker. they mm. would go back to the old ways right and as opposed to not going to god it's yeah, the idols like, that they yeah they're like yeah they're like hey watch are too too ready to the things we, we know, know familiar with the things we're familiar mm. with because this is uncomfortable mm. right and i've realized that i am such an israelite you mm. know and i was just like I know there are things that God has for me and I don't want to take 40 years to get them mm. versus 7 days mm. because it can take 7 days but because I'm so stuck in my ways mm. because my mentality mm. is so small mm. or because I have not developed my character enough to receive mm. that blessing mm. then I have some work to do mm. you know and I was just like girl I don't know how but i need to i need there's some things i need to work on and there are some cycles even now that i need to break yeah. in order f- i feel like i've only scratched the surface of who of who i'm supposed to be same yeah. same i'm only now getting comfortable with even speaking you know like me yeah. <laughs> i just people just post pictures i'm doing a video nikiongea wapi please they have yeah. nothing to say and that's number one because i had insecurities about my teeth which i'm by the way no, never going to fix because i'm now fully in love with them but beautiful, yeah possible. i'm just yeah. like for the longest time i was just like um i'm not going to smile but i think when you see people who like i'll give, i'll use an example of um majimbo because people say her success is overnight but me i'm just like she was constantly repeatedly herself constantly mm-hmm. there's not once that she decided to change and be someone else and the minute one person laid her eyes on her and knew this is what, this is a dime we were sitting on it opened a magnitude of blessings mm. so i'm just like why is it that we are constantly trying to like be other people in the process of like finding ourselves and now there's this societal norms of how bodies look like and what beauty influencers look like and all these things when our path has already been destined mm. there's already things that if i do this this is where we are going and mm. god is already seeing you taking those steps but we take we tend to take steps back because of what is happening in society like when you mm. mentioned the previous previous episode that a couple of your friends are getting my that in itself would shake a couple of people because mm. So what is it about me that I'm not getting married? Mm. And now for me the season that I'm in <laughs> cuz both my siblings are married with kids. 
the questions for eh, I saw a boyfriend I'm like what's, <laughs> what's what's that? happening and yeah. I'm just like no I don't have a boyfriend I'm single and I'm okay with being single why because I don't want to bleed on anyone mm. I genuinely don't want to bleed on anyone because I feel like my, I had a contribution to the breakups that I've had I had both friendships both relationships I was bleeding on them and expecting them to do just having very high expectations of people and now the reason why I'm also now loving on my friends the way I am is because I've been able to set clear boundaries as to what I can and cannot take. Mm-hmm. So the same thing needs to happen with my relationships. I'm like, the way you said earlier that your partner has met you where you're at is mm-hmm. is, is is quite is quite important because if if at all you were having high expectations or any, or any expectations of him whatsoever when you had done bare minimum, then there'd be an imbalance, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. They they say relationships are not 50-50. There are times you'll just have to take the 100 or there are times you'll take the 80, times you'll take the 20. Yeah. And I think that also goes with ourselves. I'm like, God, you want God to take the 80% and then you're constantly taking the 20. When will you take the 80? When will mm-hmm. you actually do the groundwork? Yeah. When will you go to church? When will you ask for forgiveness? When will you learn to say sorry? Because that was also a big thing for me. I never used to know how to say sorry. Mm. I'm like, what do you mean I'm wrong? <laughs> but I'm perfect. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I'm like... The cycles for me is just anything that is familiar. When I've when I when I'm in a situation and I feel like I've been here before, I have to sit down and look at it twice. Yeah. And from that I'm like, okay, so now is it a me thing? Mm-hmm. Because for the longest time the breakups are I knew I was just like, what is a common denominator, Stephanie? Okay, Stephanie needs to take some time out mm. and see what Stephanie needs to fix. Mm-hmm. But now because I'm in a much better place, I'm able to even cue things that are not healthy for me faster than mm-hmm. I was in the past. So there's a lot of clarity that you get in the process of like reinventing yourself. And yeah. the path that I choose to take with the gym, the path that I choose to take maybe with reading books and therapy and maybe nature activities or whatever may not necessarily work for everyone. Yeah. I think reinvention is very personal. True. You do know your core values. You do know the things that work in your system. But for me, I think the best place also to start is like have a routine. Don't leave time for... An idle mind. Mm-hmm. Don't, 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 because that's where the spirals begin. Yeah, that's that's when how you, you go back to familiar. That's things. good. That's where yeah. you go back to an ex because I'm just like, send me a boy alone on Saturday yeah. night. Like, let me call mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't be idle. Mm. And recently on, on my page, I was asking people, like, what are our hobbies? Mm. You know, we had hobbies when we were kids. Yeah. Like 14 And we 15, were really pushed to And we them. were on it. Like yeah. me, I was in, very in deep in skating and swimming. But then, I think as I've gotten older, the things that I enjoy seemingly started fading away. Mm. And now we started depending on people to Mm -hmm. fill those voids. Mm -hmm. So now that's why everyone enjoys clubbing. But was clubbing really, is it a thing? Like, you know, I'm like, what is the point of going to listen to the same songs over and over again, seeing the same people (laughs) over and over again, getting hammered and then being hungover on Monday? I'm like, I'm sorry, but I, I don't actually like it. And, you know, I think coming to realize the things that I'm doing for other people. Mm. Just because that's what is fun at the moment. I'm like, I can find other ways to have fun. And for me, it's just the person that should be pleased the most is me in this process. The, I, I need to be able to get eight hours of sound sleep knowing that I've done right by me mm-hmm. and not by anyone else. Yeah. So I take it a day at a time knowing if I'm here, I'm here because I know and I feel like I feel like what because best kept secret is a big deal. If you all don't know, it's a big deal, period. And I would not have taken this opportunity if at all. And I think we've done this before where you sent me a message and I just told you, yo, I'm yeah, not in the right, I'm not in yeah. the right headspace. Mm. And that is only, is also to show you that I'm not going to sh- have ass it when I show up in spaces. I'm like, I'd rather show up a hundred percent knowing that I'm capable and willing mm-hmm. and that I'm deserving of certain yeah. conversations as opposed to, and I actually have something to say as opposed to now you find me in a space where I've just gone through a mental rut and now I'm just projecting. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, Reinvention looks different for everyone. I think it's such a it's a it's a it's a hard it's a hard one. It's a hard one, I'm not gonna lie, but you'll be so happy with yourself in the long run yeah. knowing that you're happy with who you are mm-hmm. and that you've let go of a bad habit, that now the people that you're attracting are not attracted to you because of your pain, but they're attracted to you because of your light, mm-hmm. because of what you're bringing into their lives. So yeah. Yeah. It's fun, but also I like the routine thing mm. as well because I feel like every time my routine is not oh, good, you'll see the then results. I, yeah, I start to I start to wonder. Yeah, there's some mm. things that just start showing mm. up and creeping mm. up back. Mm. So I really like the routine thing mm. as well. I think my last point would just would be to 
um, just encourage anyone who is in that um, season of breaking cycles and reinventing themselves and yeah. coming into themselves mm. to push through the dis- comfort mm. because it will get very uncomfortable very. it will get very hard change is very difficult and especially when you have been a certain way for a, for long a, for a really long time mm. and you're feeling like this is not who i uh, mm. this is not who i am i am not walking in the fullness of the person that i am supposed mm. to be it's going to be very uncomfortable yeah. and if you don't push through the discomfort then you will remain stuck in, in that cycle. that loop Mm. you will remain stuck in that cycle mm. because you will go back to what is familiar Absolutely. because this is comfortable mm. i know this one works you mm. know and for me that would show up when i i would keep going back to that um toxic ex that i would have mm. because every time i'd go in the streets and i'd go on a couple of dates and it goes badly i'm like, I'm like hey my pillow i've literally <laughs> told my friends better the devil i know than the angel i don't yeah. know I'm yeah. like the way this man are moving in the streets. Let, Let me, me go, go back, back to that one that I know yeah. that he cheats and he cheats like this yeah. or he lies and he lies mm. like this or he disrespects me and he disrespects mm. me like this. The way the people are surprising me. The people are moving mad. Let me just go back mm. to the devil that I know, yeah. you know. And it was so uncomfortable for me to be like this is familiar and it's comfortable but this is not the best that I can do. Yeah. I know that the story that god has for me is so much better than this mm. and even beyond just um, romantic relationships just me as a person you know when you just know you could do better i know i could do better yeah. i know i and ha- you're not doing I'm it i'm not doing mm. it i am selling myself short, short you know and again like I, i i think a lot of people keep talking about this like when you go to heaven thing and god shows you the person that you are meant to be and, and you're like just a highlight like, reel of your life yeah. and you're like what so this is what this was is just the, the next yeah, step yeah imagine if i, I, I just, just needed to through that discomfort this is the person that i was going to become and you know so when it gets uncomfortable and when it gets hard because it is going to it get will. like that mm. i just need you to remember to push through the discomfort because the person that you will come out um, to be on the other side you will be so grateful to your old self for pushing through that so mm. yeah i think that's my last best kept secrets about this topic what about you i think it's just living also a life without regret i think you'd rather mm-hmm. try and know that you tried than not try at all mm-hmm. in the name of comfort yeah um sometimes that solitude that that you know being away that separation from the crowd yeah. is a, is is lonely like we we're talking about earlier yeah. like it's lonely and if at all you don't fill your cup and if at all you don't see what it is that you can gain from this experience you just never know mm. like Imagine now the day you see what could potentially happen is when you die and then you yeah. co- for the rest of your life you're just living in regret of the what ifs that mm-hmm. could have been I'm like other the step and <laughs> no I stepped that not step yeah mm. that not at all yeah. yeah so I'm like even even if you're in this space where you're not happy with the the loops you're not happy with how you you present yourself you're not happy with the things that you engage in the people that you keep around you're just wondering so what is going to be what is what is my life going to look like without the things that are normal to me mm. you won't know until you try yeah yeah i love that that's a great closing remark you, you won't, won't know, know until, until you try until you try yeah, yeah. All right, thank you so much Steph. Thank This has so. been such a great con- it felt more of like a conversation, conversation yeah. yeah, which is what I always hope my guests feel like. Yes, so thank you amazing. so much for sharing. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you. I'm actually going to say a prayer for you. Um, That's usually they were just like making fun gift. of me about how I'm a prayer warrior in one of the other no, episodes. Right now? But no, I will. I right actually now? Yeah, That's my best I, gift. I hope I remember, but yeah. I'll um, touch yeah, you. so <laughs> <laughs> Like you said, you're gonna pray for me. <laughs> but yeah, thank yeah. you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing and thank being so vulnerable with me. us. I know mm. this wasn't the easiest conversation to have and be vulnerable mm. about so thank you for trusting us yeah. um yeah and thank you guys for watching for those who are watching us on youtube don't forget to like comment subscribe, subscribe and if share. you and share yeah. share with <laughs> someone just yeah. share mm. and if you're listening to us on our audio platforms thank you for listening i will see you or you will hear me in the next episode bye bye <laughs>